Ok, <coughs> hello everybody, welcome on demo video about uh, our new CAS integration, we are like calling it right now K-Queen and what, what we work on on last days for our multi-cloud story. <coughs> so I will go through the introduction, then then what is K-Queen and then I will give the demo of, of K-Queen itself that you see uh, how it looks and, and what it does. So basically, before I will get there, let me summarize our layers, what we, what we figure out for our uh, multi-cloud story. So we see like four layers, where the bottom layer is uh, any arbitrary public cloud. It can be our MCP OpenStack, but it doesn't have to be. It can be AWS, GKE, Azure, even VMware and bare metal. So it's set of virtual or physical uh, infrastructure resources. Then layer of top on top should be provide abstraction and and the management to abstract the any arbitrary provider and provide workload mobility and possibility to move things across. So in this layer we see Kubernetes and Calico, Istio monitoring and other infrastructure management and on. So it's really focused on on the infrastructure layer. Then service catalog and the framework is uh, libraries of certified Helm charts, components, Helm apply plugin, open broker API. So we, so it's a, it's a pieces of the open source components which run and help people to run on Kubernetes and uh, automatically monitored and and uh, similar things. And uh, to top layer is a layer related to uh, app orchestration, which is. Uh, DevOps toolchain which provides end-to-end -end life cycle for applications on top. This video focus only on layer of infrastructure management. So I will not be talking about upper levers which we addressing as well, but this is only about Mirantis Queen. So what are our goals here? So our goal is to provide Kubernetes as a service environment deployments with, with focus on operations, audit visibility and security, provide update and ag upgrade, provide multi-cloud orchestration, which means run on different cloud providers, and be platform agnostic. So we don't want to tie ourselves to specific Kubernetes clusters from us, we want to support other clusters. So it's not about only installation and it should be open and without without lock-in so this is the goal of 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 this uh, this this level so what is kqueen it's a kubernetes cluster manager so it's multi-tenant api with web ui and cli which allows to use a module provisioner so not just our drivetrain on jenkins but also other gke heat and allows to request cluster, provision cluster, and potentially do more. But but it's a cluster management tool. Explain the workflow, how we see it. So on the right side we have different cloud providers. Uh, it can be OpenStack, Azure, Google Cloud, Amazon, but can be bare metal and VMware as well. And then we have KQueen, which is a service an API which we can manage through UI or CLI and basic workflow what, what we want to follow here is to trigger deploy provi on provisioner and the provisioner is not part of KQueen it can be our Mirantis drivetrain in case of a managed Kubernetes but it can be Kubespray, Google Cloud, Jenkins uh, it can be COPS, any provisioner. So it should be provisioner agnostic. And what it does, it starts and install Kubernetes in the given public cloud. And then, when installation is done, the provisioner returns back Kubernetes API and Kube config, which is stored in the KQueen for the other tasks. So basically, request the cluster or scale up cluster, scale down cluster, and as a return is kubeconfig. And the last piece is manage, operate, and monitor and audit 
clusters. So basically it goes directly without provisioner into cluster and pull information from the API. So this approach is very good because we don't have to just provision clusters, but we can even add existing clusters into the backend and just like operate them, monitor and provide uh, itinerary. So let's go on my demo where I will provision Kubernetes cluster on AWS. I show the details. I will add existing cluster and the provisioner so you will see the whole workflow uh, how it works. So here I have instance of KQueen. So I will log inside now as a, as, a, as a admin but any other user and I see basic information. I see my running clusters which are Kubernetes clusters which runs and I see available provisioners. So provisioner is a something which allows to start clusters and you can see that we have Jenkins provisioner to AWS and we can have for instance cube spray or any other provisioner which customer uh, uh, customer requires so if i want to deploy the cluster right now because we are using uh, jenkins uh, i will pick jenkins provisioner which is pre-configured and i will pass the information uh, uh, as a name, it, we can we can propose more like how many nodes, versions, etc. But now I'm just passing name in this demo, and I will click on submit. So what has happened is that it triggered the provisioner, and it's currently deploying. So if I will open this cluster, uh, we should see the information from uh, from the status of, 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 of the deploying so we see like status bar stage deploying and then we will be able to download kubeconfig and use it so this takes some time and what's what it does is that it basically triggered here our Jenkins instance you can see here and triggered new job uh, just trigger new job which installing Kubernetes into AWS so basically it creates structure and install and, and does all these things so this is standard drive train Kubernetes deployment so it triggers and it returns back the status about percentage like 4% when pipeline run cluster is ready and can be used so uh, Jenkins actually returns kubeconfig and uh, and the endpoint. That's two artifacts which which comes go back. So KQueen in this stage deploying and I provisioned before cluster. So I have already one provisioned same by same provisioner. So I can open here and we can take a look what it does. So it provides nice view into what's running in the cluster. So we see namespaces, number of nodes deployments, ports and services. So on the status we see name of the node, internal IP, external IP, version of operation system and statuses of disk, memory. And we also see size of the node itself and maximum of scheduled port available on these nodes plus what is active. So we can see that these three are master nodes and these two probably running some some workloads to give the visibility on the workloads we also pulling information about deployment so we can see like namespaces name of the apps and ports which are all scheduled in this cluster so it gives you nice visibility of the outputs from the kubernetes in one place plus services with the links which you can very easily open uh, very easily open directly from the from the KQueen. So here I'm running some flask up sample flask up so I can directly open it uh, from the from the cluster. So this is this is things which gives very nice visibility into into your cluster. Then topology 
where we drawing some topologies with the objects where you see details here you see port services nodes deployments namespaces so you have some dynamic graphs from the from the objects what we pulling from the cluster this is a little bit like not not nice so we have two options second is hive plot which very nicely draw the relations between between the objects you can click on it see the status you will see information about relations so it's nice visibility into your cluster so it's not about just installation but also about um, possibility to see what is inside so this is pre-deployed cluster uh, if I'm going back uh, so we deployed cluster we take a look on the existing uh, on the existing cluster uh, we can see like number of percentage of our original what we uh, uh, what we triggered and uh, now let me let me do one thing uh, let me show you another feature which is I can create provisioner right and we have here Jenkins and manual so I can say like manual provisioner right create this provisioner and now I can actually add add cluster which was already provisioned so I can go to customer and add his existing cluster here so into deploy I can pick the manual provisioner choose the cube config right so I have some AWS cube config and I will say AVS AWS uh, cluster manual I will edit and we can see that immediately we have manual provisioner edit cluster we can go inside right we can again download cube config but we see this cluster has 10 nodes 8 deployments 3 13 ports 17 services so immediately in the second this is much bigger cluster I am getting all information from again deployments and services running running on the top so very very fast very easy to add clusters so in the topology again I see uh, what's running there uh, what are the relations and the last thing what I want to show is add-ons where in the add-ons we want to provide most common infrastructure pieces so it's not application catalog but it's add-ons which are related to infrastructure so do you want docker registry do you want linkerd service mesh istio integration to sonobi uh, and we have monocular right so let's take a look uh, because this cluster uh, can have uh, monocular right so i can click on this i will get open monocular catalog which is open source helm service catalog available in the community and I can I deploy that as an add-on into Kubernetes cluster and now if I want I can very easily start for instance Jenkins on my cluster so I see uh, all versions and I can on one click I can get the Jenkins so I just deployed Jenkins in the cluster and I see I see the name uh, I see the name of the deployments so 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 Jenkins is there and we can check back in KQueen by just refreshing if actually uh, Jenkins was deployed and we can see it in the deployment so we can see here that was we'll just deployed Jenkins Dusty Getsko deployment and we can see here our Jenkins with with endpoints uh, what we can immediately uh, uh, immediately open so this way you can very easily in several seconds start the workload through the add-ons what we uh, what, uh, what, what we shipped right so to, to just check that our uh, Jenkins is running uh, let me do uh, let me just check because we are using node port it's internal cluster so I can 
I can just copy external IP address of any node and just add the external port just add the external port and you can see I just I, I, I got Jenkins so very very straightforward very very easy very easily uh, uh, done it and uh, so this is this is the demo of latest uh, latest K-Queen what I wanted to show so going back to slides just to finish it uh, key benefits just to summarize open source CAS independent on the provisioner right we can enable any provisioner you saw how I provision through Jenkins but how I can add manual provisioner we can customize it we can provide bare metal we doesn't have to be tight because under the hood is Jenkins with stages we can provision into bare metal automate mass and, and do it very easy to play with adding extern with adding existing clusters right in several seconds lightweight Kubernetes itinerary what it means is like you can have like 10 clusters you see them on one place you can very quickly look inside what is there what is running there you can even we can pull this information do audit on images right like what images are used we can pl plug it into cloud intelligence through third party systems or into billing and it has very pluggable architecture right as you see I just started on service catalog I just started the new new uh, new Jenkins instance so this is this is the benefits for upcoming features what we are thinking is airbag like read only access add-ons limitation so we can uh, support some airbag features uh, we can support audit uh, more extensions add-ons and we can probably uh, request clusters through open broker api standard for the for the kubernetes so uh, thank you for your attention uh, let me know if you need to know more info.